Hi everyone! I wanted to mix this up on this tutorial, so rather than do wreath after wreath after wreath, which I'm sure you enjoy, I thought that I would take a little bit of a time, like a little bit time, can't talk, I thought I would take time to show you how to make a bow. Now, I know you guys are probably like, I've, I've gone through, I've seen bow, bow tutorials, I already know or maybe you don't know how to make a bow. And so that's the point of the tutorial, is when I first started out as a wreath maker, the one thing that I struggled with wasn't so much design and technique, because you could watch tutorials and put that together step by step, the way that somebody is putting those materials together. But it's like bow making becomes an art. You have to practice in order to get really good at what you're doing. So I thought I would show you how to put together a bow that has two very different looks, even though you're assembling the bow the same way all the way through the process. And so um, I'm gonna go ahead and pivot you down so that you could um, see what we're gonna be doing. So today's just bow making tutorials. Um, I haven't done one in a little over a year, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to do that. And then also to talk through the process with you, the whys. What can you change up? What are some variations that you can do? So I'm going to go ahead and pivot you down right now. Hi, Valerie. Welcome. So we're going to go ahead and go straight down. And I'm going to try to light up my camera as best as I can. So I'm always like, this is the one thing I'm most critical about is making sure you can see everything. So hi, Lynn from Wisconsin. Thank you for joining. Um, hello. Why am I not seeing my life? There we go. Okay, I've got it now. So, um, what I'm going to be doing is using my Bodabra. Why? Why, cat? You never use anything else but a Bodabra. Well, Bodabra is what I learned on because when I first started out, it was all about cost. And so, at the time, this was only like $15. Uh, the Pro Bow was averaging right around $40. And the easy bow maker was out there, but nobody was like really um, doing it. Um, and I know that that is like uh, what a lot of people are becoming very fluent on is the easy bow maker. And so I like, for me, it's always going to be about space. So as a wreath maker, everything that you add to your inventory, especially if you're in a very small space, um, you you want things that are not going to take up a lot of space. So for me, the Easy Bow Maker takes up a lot of space. It's long, once you put the sticks in it, you can't um, pull the sticks back out. What I liked about this is if I kept it in the box, it was in a nice little square. So anything that was a rectangle shape or square um, shape worked out perfectly because you got the art of stacking um, down pat. Um, Pro Bow was a little too heavy, a little too bulky to pull out time and time again. And then I found that with uh, Bodabra, and I don't get plugged, I don't receive any kind of compensation from Bodabra for this, so please don't think that. Um, it also acts as a pair of hands, an extra pair of hands. So when you're ready to put your angel tree topper together, this is a uh, plus tool that you can't really utilize any of the other bow makers for. So if you had to pick one, for me, it was, this is where I started, this is where I'm most fluent, and this is the most versatile for me. So we are going to start off with your traditional Christmas bow, the red, the green, and the white. And so let me show you the materials that we're going to be using. We're going to use this two and a half inch ribbon. This is from Hobby Lobby, and this was quite a while ago. So this is before Hobby Lobby came out with, instead of letters, we're going to do numbers instead. I don't know why they did that. I think they downsized the ribbon selection because when I went to Hobby Lobby this year, there was not that many new ribbons. So I was kind of disappointed. So we're also going to be using this two and a half inch. If you've gone to, is this Sam's Club? Sam's Club well, recently, this might still be available. So these two are going to be the large ribbons. Um, we're also going to incorporate, and this is from Craft Outlet, the lime green, the dark green, the white, and the red, inch and a half. Then I'm also using these Christmas trees in the same color palette. This was from Joann's in 2020. 
Then we're going to use this red with the lime green dots. That was also from Joanne's 2018. And then we're using this fun one, which I think has now been discontinued. It's just called Lines and Squiggles. Um, so it's got all the same colors in here. And so the first thing I do when I'm assembling my bow idea is I lay everything out and I always try to go for something with a lot of pattern or a lot of detail in my last bow that I'm going to add in. So I'm not sure if I'm going to add this one or I'm going to add the trees. So the trees just might kind of tie it in all together. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of like, I lean towards this a little bit as well. Um, so what I do before I start is I come up with the plan. And I think that this is the plan, the way I kind of had them here. I think I want to separate this one though, just so that we have like, here's a little bit more predominantly green, here's red, here's a mix. Um, we've got a little introduction of the white. If we put these two together, it's like too much white background. So I like to break that up a little bit and then put that on the top. So I always come up with my plan on which ribbon's going to go in the Bodabra starting from the first all the way to the last. Um, you don't have to go two, two and a half inch, uh, four inch and a half. That's just kind of what has been like my go-to for a bow uh, as far as materials go. But um, I can make do with just one two and a half inch and one inch and a half and still turn out a really incredible bow. So we're going to um, go ahead and put this process in place and then I'm going to show you how you can make it two different ways. Um, so we're going to start, I'm just going to move these ones kind of up and out. So we're going to start with this two and a half inch from Hobby Lobby. So it does have the wired edge, but it also has a wire in here as well. This is where they stitch that satin to the inside. So when you see ribbon like this, where it's got a predominant stripe down the center, you're going to have to be careful when it comes time to fluffing, because if you take your ribbon and you pull against each other like this, you could run the risk of separating this because sometimes it's not really put together really super well. So you just have to be careful on the fluff part. So we're going to start with the dovetail edge, which just means bring your wired edges together. We are going to cut from our wired edge, or not from the wired edge, from the, the fold here to the wired point. So depending upon how deep you want your V determines where you will start cutting on your folded edge down to the wired point. The destination is always going to be the same. It just depends on how deep do you want it. And I like mine fairly deep because I think it creates a greater impact than something that's just a little bit shallow. So the first dimension that we're going to do, and I use this bow pretty much on almost every single wreath I do. Why? Because I know after doing this for almost six years, exactly how big this bow is going to be and what I can do with it, how versatile it is. So that's why I use it quite frequently. So we're going to measure in 10 inches. So I'm just going to gather right at the 10, starting with the right side material facing up, and then we're gonna twist it right at that 10 mark. And then we're just going to simply place that right inside the Bodabra. And then we're gonna flip it over and we want to measure five and a half inches for our loop length. What that means is when I take this and do a twist in it, place it back inside, I'm going to keep my bow dabber right on the 10 inch line so that when I stretch this out, I want to be right at five and a half inches. So I'm just about there. I'll pull it back just a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and measure the same on the other side. Now, people always ask me, why do you, why do you move your bow dabra? Why do you flip it? I don't know where that like organically came from. It was just my body's natural way of always like measuring from the left. I'm not left-handed. 
but um, my husband thinks it's because it helps me keep my ribbon organized so it doesn't um, it doesn't twist even though technically right there it did twist um, again stretch it out I'm at about five and two quarters let's see we're right there at five and a half I'm gonna flip this back to the other side and we're gonna stretch this out and we're gonna cut it right at 10 inches do the dovetail end again and then our first one is complete so that's all down do you guys have any questions so far hi sissy hi Cheryl hi or er, or in a rind a rind uh, Linda, hi Sue, hi Denise, hi Robin, hi Maddie, hi Christine, all the way from the UK. Hi Lynn. Okay, so I'm just going to start taking these and throwing these in those boxes because then I'm technically done. We are going to, hi Cheryl, welcome. Now we're going to take this red Costco ribbon and we have a vertical pattern right here. So when we're creating a bow, and let's say, for example, you want to create, you want to keep your ribbon all going the same direction. Um, there's not much you can do for a vertical pattern. A horizontal pattern, it's really easy to do. If you want to keep it on a vertical pattern, the only thing that you can do is kind of create your loop with a tail. Put that in create another loop with a tail and put that in but then you run the rest that when a customer goes to fluff it and maybe they're fluffing a little too hard that as they're fluffing because there's nothing really holding this in except wire is as they're fluffing they um, remove the other side of your tail so I usually just let vertical patterns be um, the way that they are and so let's go ahead and dovetail this one. I got the thread right on the end of that one. So let's go nine and a half inches here. So we're going to go nine and a half inches in, twist, place inside. And then now we're going to do five inches for the loop length. So by now, you know, loop length simply means taking your bodabra, putting it right on the 10, stretching it out. This should stop right on your five inch mark. Basically, it's a 10 inch piece of ribbon because five and five is 10. Do the same on the other side. Make sure. And we're way over on that one. There we go. There's five. And then we're going to take this back out to nine and a half, right at the end of our tree. Even though you might try to do it the other way, sometimes when you go to fluff your ribbon, your, um, your ends might not line up anyway. You might have put your bow on upside down and it took you so long to put it in, you're not going to pull that out. So it is going to be what it is. Um, I saw a question Lynn asks, why do you sew many ribbons? Well, for me, I love ribbons, so I like to give a lot of texture, design, and color. And if I use a lot, it means I use very little out of each ribbon roll. So just by doing this, instead of going back and forth and back and forth, I'm, I'm actually saving ribbon so that I can take this the exact same ribbon and oh I don't know how many more pieces I'd be able to get <clears throat> um thinking the longest piece if we go 10 11 11 and then another 10 we're using 41 inches so just under three feet of ribbon uh, for the bottom and then it starts to come up so you're actually, like I said, using less because you're, you're, you're cutting into your ribbon roll and not using quite so much of each roll. Okay. 
Um, we were taking this one, and this is from Craft Outlet. This is your striped, and sometimes fun patterns like this, it's worthwhile to purchase on a 50 yard spool so that you don't have to have five of the 10 yard spools, you just have one. So we're going in nine inches, twist. We're gonna flip this up and over. And I always just kind of gauge roughly where the next measurement's going to be. This one needs to be at four and a half inches. I'm way over. So I'm gonna bring that back. Do the same on the other side. I think I'm pretty close on that one. Right there, four and a half. And then stretch this out to nine inches. What this does yield is a 11 inch in diameter uh, bow, not counting the tails. If you were to count the tails, um, it would be uh, about 20, I'm trying to think. Uh, roughly about 20 inches because we're going 10 and 10 that would be a 20 inch bow going from the tails but I average that based on the loop size now we're gonna do oh no we're doing the tree Christmas tree same thing vertical print can't do anything with it So here we're going to go eight and a half inches, twist, and this time we're going to do the exact same. We're doing two at four and a half. So I'm just going to pull those in. I kind of cheated. I put my finger in the bottom one since that's already measured. Put the finger in the top loop and just pull. Same thing over here. Just kind of gauge it, put your finger in the top, pull the top one, but we still need to measure out our length at eight and a half. And if you've watched me long enough, you know that pretty much um, I make them the same all the time. That is going into the trash. I'm not fetching that now. This is another one from Joann's. Now this one is a very thin ribbon. It's got, it's more of a satin ribbon, but with a crimped wire edge. So this one's gonna probably want to slip out because it doesn't have an awful lot of strength holding it up. But this one's gonna be eight inches. We're pinching in. We're twisting, place it inside. And this one's going to be four inches for our loop length. Right there. Up and over. Bring that back down. Way too far. Back out to eight. And we'll tuck this inside. And then this also gives me a time to make any adjustments. If I see like there's any pinched ribbon going into my bow dabber at this time, I could um, adjust that before we get too far. And then the last one is going to be that little curly cue. Squiggles and lines. So we'll dovetail this. This one's going to be seven and a half inches. Twist, place it on the inside, up and over. Same thing. We want to make sure this goes out three and a half inches. Up and over, three and a half inches. A little closer to four. 
kind of back out. Seven and a half. Dovetail the end. And this one is all ready. So you see that using a lot of ribbons gives you a lot of options. We're staying within those same color palettes, but it's using a lot of different patterns, dots, lines, solids. Um, so I just think it makes for a really pretty bow. So we're going to take a pipe cleaner. I form it into like a little U or V shape. So that as I go to pick these up, I'm compressing down on both sides, lifting. I'm just going to readjust my hand so that can drop right on the top. I'm going to hold this right at the bottom, like a little crisscross. And then I'm going to turn my stack. So then I have a really good tight twist on there and I don't have to use the hand strength in my hand. And as I've gotten older, that is a big, huge deal. I don't know at what point I suddenly went to try to pull a label off of a coffee creamer and I just did not have hand strength anymore. And from that point on, you know, you deal with that. So I am bringing the fluff board out of its retirement. Um, as you can see, it has some minor repairs that have been done to it because when I had this board created for me, it was all done with different types of wood, glued, pressure. So pressure, when it's hit with either heat or cold, it contracts or expands. And that's exactly what happened. And it'll always pick the weakest points on the board to split and that's exactly what it did here and it did here and then my husband's like well do you want to just toss it and I'm like no let's try to fix it as best as we possibly can and then um, we'll seal the whole thing I'm going to put a higher um, lacquered finish on it to kind of help it reinforce in all those places here um, but I kind of like the imperfection because we're not perfect, right? We're just all plugging along, trying to do what we can. This is a inch and a half by a two inch C hook. Um, this board measures 24 by 24 and it's an inch thick. So I just have a little C hook that you screw into the center. I'm going to just maneuver that so that my pipe cleaner hooks right under that little section right there and all that does is it holds my bow and keeps my bow from sliding off the board that's really the only thing that it's there for okay now we're going to fluff this the standard way which is where this is the top stack the bottom stack as you can tell it is not fluffed it is flat so I'm not even fluffing at this point, I'm separating. So I'm gonna lift my stack to start with the very first ribbon we did. I'm gonna take my tails, I'm gonna position my tail out to the left, and I'm gonna take the same loop and move that to the right. Then I'm gonna to go to the other side and do the opposite. I'm going to move the loop to the left and the tail to the right. This way, every single ribbon that you come, it, that you bring down, you're going to separate it by loops and tails, and they go completely opposite of each other. So that as I bring down the next one, I'm going to go tail to the right, loop now to the left, go back over to the other side. We're gonna take our tail and our loop. So right now, all it's doing is alternating the colors of my loops with my tails in bundles of two, okay? From here, I'm just going to follow the same pattern. We're going tail to the left, loop to the right, go back over and do the opposite. So here's my tail, here's my loop. Here, we're going tail, loop, Oops, we're going 
tail over here. Here's my loop. We're still going through. Just follow the sequence all the way down. Gives you time to adjust any ribbon. If there's a pinch in it you need to adjust. You can adjust that. Opposites on the opposite side. Okay. And now we're coming up here for the last one. Last one. And right now everything is still flat. So all I've done is separate tails from my loops. This helps me as a wreath designer so that when I go to place this on a um, wreath, I know where my tails are all going to be and I know where my loops are so that as once I fluff this, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, let's go ahead and fluff. We're going to start with the loops on the top. You're going to take the top two. You're going to lift. Lift and round those. We don't want to see squared corners. No, no like creases. Let's make those look pretty. And we're going to do it here. And try to get fingers in this one. Nice. Now we're starting to make it three dimensional. Don't worry about the tails yet. Okay, now we're going to take the next set and you can decide if you want trees between or you want the blocks of color between. I'm going to go blocks of color. So I'm just going to move this slightly off to the side, make this come right between them. We're going to do the same thing over here. Blocks of color between and we're going to move the other off to the side. Okay, so we've lifted the bottom two. Now we're going to go to the ultimate bottom. <laughs> right, Della? Just let us see you fixed your fluff board. Well, we fixed it as best as we could. So I didn't want it to be a perfect fit. So now we're just doing the same thing with the bottom. Just decide what you want to see where. I kind of like that look, that look. So now my red is going in between these colors. So nice and rounded. And then this is going to come off more towards the side. And then just seriously lift and fluff to where you have a really nice desired look here. And then for our tails to round them, we're just going to lift just like this, right in between your fingers. Like we're doing the old style curling ribbon. Only your fingers are the fake scissors. And that'll put that curl right back in that ribbon, which is why we like wired. It's because you can revive that look. So just kind of play with the ribbon, see what you want, where, you know, what your desired look is for your final project. And, and that's what I'm saying is that this yields a um, 11 inch in diameter bow based on this. So what I'm saying is when I go to add my sign, let me just grab this sign, like this one. If I want to place this on my sign, things that you have to take into consideration. If you put your bow here, it's gonna cover the Christmas part of your sign. If you put it here, mm, you might be able to adjust it slightly upward so that you can still read Merry Christmas and still see the pattern. You could do a bow at the bottom. You could do a bow at the top. But now, knowing where my loops are, I can just slide this right under my sign and then I can have my loops cascade down, which is why I always use this bow, is so that I know where everything is going to fall. I know where I can place everything so that it's going to fall all the way around my sign based on my look, okay? Now that looks great, right? Totally matches. Well, let's say for example, you wanna go with a bow that, um, maybe we wanna do it here, right? Maybe you wanna, wanna go here. You could technically go there. Move that down so you can see. You could have this look splay out like this. But most of the time when we put 
bows at the bottom of our base. We want the tails to hang long so you can have little curly cues. Maybe you can have ribbon streamers. So with this bow, same look. Let me show you how you can do that. So instead, this bow is so pretty, I don't want to like dismantle it. But what you would do in an instance like that is you are going to move all your tails down below. So let's do this. Let's start at the bottom and I'm going to do it here. So I'm going to move all my tails down to the bottom. I'm going to destroy this bow, but that's okay. Um, I'm just going through finding, okay, this one, here's my tail. This one, here's this tail. This one, it's tails over here. So we're going to move it down. This one, our tail is here. This one, our tail is over here. We want to move that down. Go back over here. Move it down. This one, our tail is there. Here. Let's move the tail down. Tail down. I'm always looking to see, does it need to slide under or does it need to slide through? So we're going to smash everything back down. Okay. So you can see if you started it that way, we're having a downward bow. You're going to want to take all your tails and you want to make all your tails go down to the bottom. Then the process is still relatively the same. You're going to pick up your top two ribbons. Okay. So here and here, we're going to go opposites. Same thing there and there. And the same process holds true. You can have one come high and I can have this one kind of come in between. Go over to the other side. Now I'm going to have the Christmas trees go high. And then we're going to have the loops down here. Here, I'm going to move my trees up. On this side, I'm going to move my Christmas tree back over here. So let's open that. Keep all the loops down. We're going to readjust that. And then I'm going to open up my other trees. Do the same thing. Readjust all your ribbons to where they have a nice look that you desire. And then for the tails, same thing. Pull them down. Pull them away. Okay. Just like this. I like to physically like make sure that I'm hitting all of them so I don't leave one underneath that may not be getting some fluffing. Same thing here. I like keeping the edges out a little bit further. Just like that. And so now you have a downward facing bow like that. And now when you add your sign on the top, we can just frame it in a whole new light, just like that. And it looks like it should if it was a downward facing bow, because now we can even move this as close as we want because our words are not being impacted up here. You could have your tails be a little bit longer. If you know you're going to be doing it from the bottom, you could have them go way longer and then really accentuate that look. But that is one bow, two different ways. So just depending upon what you want to do as far as fluffing goes, um, if it's a downward one, you want to move all your tails down before you start fluffing. And then we're going to go ahead and um, do the same separation, the same fluffing of the tails. And then now you could, you know, move this. This becomes a challenge when you're like, um, if you wanted to do the bow over here. See what I'm saying? Now we can't really put our sign here because all the tails hang over the side. Can't really do it over here because the tails are hanging all over the side. Maybe we can do something else. See, our words are impacted. So this is truly a look for a downward bow. Or you could do one here where um, I would probably do it this way. Just because we know that doing it here, we're going to impact the words. We could put one bow on the top 
top right hand side and then we can put one down here on the bottom left hand side and you can have a double bow look same bow you would just put um you would fluff this one here in the corner to where I would have the tails coming this way and the tails going across the top. So remember how our initial bow, um, our tails are out to the side. We can kind of angle them to the side and kind of have that look going. What do you guys think? That's called a bow two ways. So what questions do you guys have that I could possibly answer for you? Right, so she says, very cool to see with all the tails at the bottom. Exactly. So, <laughs> Lynn says, it's beautiful, it's amazing, but mine never turned out right. They will, I promise you. And I can tell you that because it was exactly what happened to me. I just kept practicing, practicing, like keep your method the same. Like if you just want to practice this 11 what is it? 11 inch diameter bow. Um, and just follow the formula. It's like a recipe. So, um, you can actually go to my website, sign up for my email list, which is going to, let me put it down here below and it will automatically send you the bow making recipe on a cute little recipe card so that you can follow exactly what I showed you how to do here. Um, let me go ahead and pin that so it stays at the bottom. Uh, YouTubers, that'll be in the description box below when you're watching this on a replay. So about halfway down the page, you can sign up for the email list. Um, you'll get the bow recipe, which is exactly what I walked you through here. There's also a video that you can just watch over and over and over like this one. And um, it gets to the point where... Uh, one day you're just going through the process, right? You're keeping your methods the same. We're practicing, we're practicing, the methods are all the same. We're, we're making sure our measurements are all concise. We're making sure that, you know, our, our loop lengths are the same. We're, we're fluffing. And all of a sudden, one day it'll just click. And all of a sudden you'll know exactly how to make a bow from that point on. Because that's when... All your hard work, your working out, your bow making workout finally pays off. And now you have muscle memory and now you don't need to be told. You know exactly where your dimensions are. You know exactly how you're going to fold. You know exactly how you're going to um, position everything because you know this is the look of the bow that you want. And you can vary this recipe simply by... Um, and I'm going to answer that question to Christine because she says, I love this one, but we're having difficulty getting many different ribbons in the UK. So let's change that up because I know a lot of people are like, well, times are tough. I really can only maybe let's look at this. If we did a different bow, but we did, um, do you guys want to do one with a one, two and a half inch, one inch and a half? Or do you want to do one with one, two and a half, meaning like, let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, because I want you guys to be fluent and I want you guys to see that you can do it. Where is, oh, I put it in my box. We can either do one with two like this, or we can just do one of each and I'll show you how you can still do the same. You guys tell me what you want to see and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it. We won't have the same look obviously because we're not using as many ribbons. We're only using maybe two or three ribbons. Jamie says two, two and a half and two inch and a half. <laughs> like the wreath of the month group. We're changing that by the way. We're doing six ribbons now. Uh, half inch is very hard to get. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Valerie says, let's do two ribbons. Let me see. I love challenges. So we'll see. We can do it two different ways because I want you guys to feel very, very comfortable with what I'm telling you. 
So either two ribbons, so vote two or one. That's what I want you to say. Two ribbons or one ribbon? Or sorry, two ribbons or three ribbons? I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off my board so that we can get ready. Two ribbons, two ribbons, okay. Two ribbons. They're like, let's really give her a challenge. Two ribbons. Okay, well, we're gonna take that challenge. So we're gonna do two. We're gonna say we're gonna do one of each. That's all you have. That's all you're able to find at your local store. Okay, so let's do that. It's gonna look a little different, okay? Because I'm always about looks, so we're doing two. So we're still going to do uh, our two and a half. We're gonna do two and a half and an inch and a half, and we're gonna turn out a great ribbon. Okay, so we're gonna go here. We're dovetailing our end, and we're still gonna go 10 inches. 10. We're gonna go in, we're gonna twist. We're gonna place that right on the inside. And then I am still going to go five and a half inches. Okay, so there's one. And I'm gonna do the other side. I just want to make sure we're we're right at five and a half. Oh Lord, that one's like six and a half. There's five and a half. Okay, and then we're going right out to ten. I'm like debating if I want to do half as many tails. I'm trying to do the math inside my head. Um, let's do it. Let's follow the formula. All the way through so we have a lot of tails you can either have a lot of tails or little tails so I'm gonna do it this way I'm gonna hope let me go see if I have another roll of ribbon for that one. yes I do <laughs> And don't forget when you're making ribbon that you can come in here with a solid color and still pull out a stunning wreath because solid colors um, really make a bow look stunning. There we go. So I don't have quite enough on that one to do our second tail. So I am doing this like this is bow number two. So we're gonna cut this one. Same thing, dovetail edge. And we're gonna do nine and a half inches. We're following the same formula, only you're using the same amount of ribbon. I think it would look funny though, if we're doing it on the top to have it done four different times. So we might vary the change on that one. So I'm gonna do this one. And remember, I gotta bring this in to five inches. So we went nine and a half inches for our tail length. I need to bring this in five inches. And we'll go five on this side. Okay, there's that one. Bring it right at the five. I'm gonna go back out to nine and a half inches. Now, if you didn't want to splice your ribbon, let's say for example, you really only wanted to do there's a couple different ways you could have done that. I'm just following the formula, but you could have um, just cut a 10 inch tail, loop the first set at five and a half, loop the second set at five inch, and then cut your tail again back to 10 inches, and that will give you two. Um, different ribbons, but I wanted a little bit more tails. Now let's go ahead and do this one. Now this one we're going to do a couple of different ways. So this is the way that I would show you how to do the other one. Okay, so this one would be nine inches. Okay. 
and we're doing four and a half inch loops on this one. There is, eeks. I'm trying to make sure my pinches down in that center look nice. So four and a half, four and a half. And remember ribbon number three was four and a half again. So we're just gonna do that twice. So there's one. Here's two. And then we're still cutting this at nine inches because that's where our first tail on the other side went. There's that one. Okay, now technically I don't want just like a four loop because we've got, you know, if we had just the two and a half and the inch and a half, then you just have like a total of four tails. So I want it to be a little bit more beefy. So that's why we're going two different sets here we're gonna do this one it's gonna be at eight because this one should have been nine and eight and a half so this one's going to be eight inches and then we're gonna do four inches four. bring it back to my ten there's a four And we're gonna try to do four again. A little long, way too long. And then we're gonna do a three and a half. What? Right there. And then another three and a half. we go and we're going back out to eight because that's where we started with that set so there we have it uh we need red pipe cleaner all i had was white out here so here's red picking it up the same way Drop it back over the top, tighten, kind of push that out of the way. Bring the board back up. And we're gonna hook it on the board. Oops. Didn't hook it. There we go. And we're going to separate. So first I'm going to do the fluffy bow. So here we have loop and tail. Loop and tail. And go back over here opposite. Here's our tail. Here's our loop. loop and then tail and then we're going to the next set this one's going to follow suit so we have this one and then whoops go back over to the other side girl we have this and this one and then we're going to move down and up and then here's our down this one actually was our top so let's keep those there one two where are we at two 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 and two okay we are going trying to keep these in I'm gonna go here and here because I'm trying to mix up where I want my ribbon tails to fall. And then this one's going to come up. 
this is going to come up and then we have these. So now we're going to lift top two, lift the top two, lift the bottoms, place those in whatever order you'd like. And then we're going to do the bottom. There's that one. This one. This one. Okay, that one. So that's going between those two. That's going between those two. Let's put all of our tails back in those lovely little arches. So on this one, if you wanted to, you could cut your tails so you had them just a little bit shorter. I'm leaving them flat so that you can see where the ends actually meet. But there is a beautiful bow. Why am I, where is it? Here. That's what I'm seeing. I'm like, there's a hole somewhere. And it's right there. So this is one bow, two roll or two ribbon rolls. And you can still do the same thing too with a downward um, roll. In which case, if you're doing it as a bottom bow, well, let's see what this looks like if we did it with our sign. Well, let's put it up here. I'd probably move these a little closer. Let me flip this around. So here's our single bow with the ribbon choices that you had. Okay. So there's that one. Right, Cheryl? It is a good method if you have limited. So, and you can vary how many tails you want. You could cut your tails to where maybe all your tails stay in line with your ribbons. You as a designer, this is what I want to stress, is there is no specific way you must, emphasis on the word must, build your ribbons. You could do it any way you want. You could cut these shorter. You could, um, you know, make them all end right here where your, um, where your loops are, depending upon whatever size loops you want. You can bring these ones in a little bit shorter. It's entirely up to you. Now, if we wanted to go a bow for the bottom on this. Um, and here's another option too. Let's do this. Let's move everything to the bottom. So I can show you one more quick little cheat. Not a cheat, tip. Let's call it what it is. It is a tip. Okay. So it's just easier for me to smash them all so that I can figure out what's going where. So this is our downward bow. Let's do it this way. Top two. Top two. And you know, you can tell when you're a remaker, when you walk into places like Joanne's, Hobby Lobby's, Michael's, and their bows are just not, they're like lifeless. You walk by and you fluff all their bows. Because I'm like, come on, people. You want them to buy the ribbons. So they have to actually look like they can do what they can do, but because you were, you know, in a hurry to put up the display, they don't quite look as pretty as they could. So I fluff ribbons wherever I go. I am your ribbon fluffer. Let's pull this one up to the top because it's the shorter of the two and I have it. Where are you at? You're like underneath my hook and I don't want you to be under my hook. There you go. Okay. I'm 
I'm trying to get this one untwisted. Up. Same thing. Let's make these all look pretty. There we go. What was I doing? I started off fluffing one way and I went totally opposite. I'm like, oh Lord. Like, what did I just do? Two, four. Yes. Okay. So here is our downward bow, right? Fixing these a little bit as we go. Trying to make them lay where I'd want them to be. Here's our upper. Eeks. Our upper. So that we can put that right on top of our sign. So, just like that, bring everything around right, nice and pretty. So, one, a bow made with two different, just an inch and a half and a two and a half inch ribbon. And you could vary it in so many different ways. It's like unbelievable. But let's say, for example, you're like, I really wish that we would have added longer tails. I really wanted longer tails. Super simple. Let me show you how to fix that. So I'm going to pop this off my board. Here's our back, right? Let's say, for example, see how big this last piece is. This is 33 inches, so let's just say we wanted to add a 11-inch tail, but we forgot. We didn't do that because I'm going to use this one up. I'm going to dovetail the ends at the same time, so I'm just going to match them up, fold them over, and I'm going to cut from that weird funky taped side we have a dovetail cut on both and we need to find out where the middle is so fold your tail in half right here okay you want to gather this little part right here and i'm just gonna leave it pinched there we go helping hands you can untwist the entire stack or you can just add it in. I'm going to untwist it right there. I feel pretty confident it's going to stay. I'm going to slide this right into my stack and then just retwist everything. Flipping this back over. And now, oops, now you have the longer tails to match your bow. Wow, those are way longer. Those are like, uh, no, those are 15 inch tails. So that's the way you can build a bow and just add longer tails as an add on, as an afterthought. But I was using the leftover ribbon, so that's what we we're able to show you. Oh, thank you, Lori. She said, I'm so grateful for your bows and teaching. I get so many compliments on the bows I make. I give that credit to uh, learning from you. You know, I always say it came from, came from God. He's my inspiration. He's what enables me to do what I do. So I'll just give that credit back to him. But thank you so much for that. I don't want to discredit that comment. But I hope you have enjoyed this simple bow making tutorial. Come join me. Right, Sissy? You can go. And this is, um, we're going to do that too on Thursday. We're going to do the tree topper bow. We're going to do the bow that pretty much is going to fill up this entire fluff board. The ones that go on the top of a tree. Or you can put it on a really large package. Like you could do a Santa bow um, for your kids' Santa gifts or whatever. Or just if you happen to have a large gift item and it's going to go really it needs a bow like it needs a really nice large bow 
we're going to do that one and we're going to use the pro bow. So I'm going to show you how to do the tree topper bow and we're going to do that one probably in a bunch of different metallic colors like gold and ivory. So come back and join me Thursday at 11 Pacific. That'll be one o'clock central, two o'clock Eastern time. And we'll, I'll show you how to put together a, um, whatchamacallit, a tree topper bow. And we'll look at it two different ways, possibly. It just depends on how much time we have. You can do it with one roll of ribbon, or you can do it with three full rolls of ribbon. I'm doing it with three to start, but then we'll probably do something, a little variation of, oh my God, what happens if I couldn't find any others? Um, we'll take a bow challenge at that. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the tutorial. Have an amazing night. Thank you for joining me and I will talk to you all soon. Bye for now.